I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. What do you value most? Who do you turn to in times of tribulation and trial? If you pay close attention to our readings over the course of December, you will notice that they take on a rather apocalyptic tone. We begin to hear a lot about the end times. You hear a lot about war, trial, and tribulation. It's traditional at this time of the Christian year that we begin to look forward to the day when Christ shall come again in glory. It's time when we begin to look at the reality that the things of this world are but transient and passing. And Jesus begins to push his disciples more and more to the question of what do you value most? What are you going to put your trust in? Now today the disciples we hear come into the temple and the temple they see, they say, look how glorious it is, much like this place here. And Jesus gives them a warning. All this will pass. This is not what it's about. Now for them, this would have been incredibly shocking. Because the temple was the meeting place between God and humanity. In ancient Judaism, the temple was literally the heart of the world and the universe. Everything converged on this one place. And those of you who know your biblical history will know well that the temple had been destroyed before. And each time it was destroyed, it was a huge pain and destruction to the people. It was a sign that God's favor had left them. So for Jesus to say to his disciples, all this shall pass, had it been terrifying. And then he proceeds to tell them, look, there will be war, there will be trial, there will be tribulation. But fear not. This is but a time of growth. It is a time of birth. Mark was writing to the Christians of Rome. He was taking the words of Jesus and and applying them to their own context. And for those of you who know your history well, Rome At the time of Jesus and up to the time of Mark's writing, Mark was roughly writing some estimates by the mid to late 60s AD, so almost 30 years after Jesus, Rome was experiencing incredible turmoil. And the Christian church there was truly suffering. Rome had only recently been burned to the ground and some claim that Nero placed the blame upon the Christian community. Christians were not well liked in Rome. To make matters worse, only two decades earlier, Palestine had experienced one of its worst famines. And in Palestine, at the time of Mark's writing, there were clear signs that the Jewish people were going to finally revolt once again against another oppressive empire and to overthrow it. One nation will be against another. Life as a Christian during this time was not an easy life. In fact, we Christians have things rather comfortable today here in the West. We don't have to worry about coming here to worship. We don't have to worry whether or not our faith in Jesus Christ is going to 
lead us to death or to trial or persecution. But the Christians of Mark's time really did have to face this, both in Rome and back in Palestine. And so Mark pushes his audience to hear and to discern, what are you going to depend upon? Who is going to be your trust? Who are you going to put your trust in? And sure enough, a couple of years after his writing, the temple of Jerusalem is destroyed forever. In fact, you've probably seen it on TV. The only thing that remains to this day is what we call the Wailing Wall. It literally changed the face of Judaism. Mark's gospel is actually quite relevant to our own time. Jesus' words, I think, can speak meaningfully to our own time in the sense that all of us will endure at some point in our lives upheaval, trial, and destruction. But Jesus doesn't leave us just hanging there desperate for something. He assures us, life will be born. New life will come about. All you need to do is depend upon me. That's hard. Because in some sense, it's easier to put our trust in the things we see, in our material wealth, in the treasures we enjoy. But Jesus is a realist. This won't last. You're ultimately going to have to make a decision of who and what you're going to put your trust in. And Jesus is offering, saying, come to me. Trust me. Now, we know Jesus says this just on the eve of his own passion and death. He himself knows full well that in the coming days and weeks, he will endure one of the greatest trials of his life. Yet the message remains the same. Trust and hope in the living God, and you will have life. Amen.